Right. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the college readout in the, president, in the presence of uh, Vice President Mrs. Dubovka Svitsa. Um, I would like to ask you to focus uh, your questions on the issue uh, of the Conference on the Future of Europe, the subject of today's uh, readout. Vice President, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning to everybody. It is my pleasure uh, to be here with you today for my first college readout and my first press conference. As you know, today discussions focused on two points. High Representative Mr. Joseph Borrell gave us uh, his weekly update on the international situation, focusing on the Berlin Conference on Libya and the situation in the Middle East. But the main point of discussion was the communication on shaping uh, the Conference on the Future of Europe, which I will now present to you. The College adopted today a dynamic and balanced communication as the Commission contribution to the shaping of the Conference on the Future of Europe. You know that citizens asked us to be more involved beyond elections. They want to have a greater say in the EU policy making. We are reacting to this request with a unique and ambitious initiative. As announced by President von der Leyen in her political guidelines, the conference will allow citizens from diverse backgrounds and all corners of the Union to engage in an open, transparent and structured debate around the key priorities for our future. This initiative will provide us with a unique opportunity to reflect with citizens, to listen to them, to connect and engage, to explain and build trust and confidence in each other. The Commission sees the conference as a bottom-up forum for an open, inclusive and transparent debate accessible to people from all corners of the Union, as I already said. Other EU institutions, national parliaments, social partners, regional and local authorities and civil societies are invited to join. A multilingual online platform will ensure transparency of debate and support wider participation. As you might already know, we propose two parallel uh, work strands for the debate. The first focused on the EU priorities and objectives, including the fight against climate change and the environmental challenges, an economy that works for people, social fairness and equality, Europe's digital transformation, promoting our European values, strengthening the European voice in the world, as well as shoring on the Union's democratic foundations. The second strand on topics related to democratic processes and institutional matters, notably the lead candidate system and transnational list for elections to the European Parliament for 2024. As we do not want to continue doing business as usual, and we want to be a success, we need to reach to as many citizens as possible, to commit to an open dialogue and conversation, to ensure that citizens see the tangible impact of the debates through a feedback mechanism, which is very important, allowing ideas to translate into concrete recommendations. We will build on the positive experience of the citizens' dialogues and we will go beyond the cities into uh, not only to metropolitan regions, not only to capitals. We want to uh, reach those who are critical, also those who are critical towards the uh, European Union. To ensure this broad outreach, we propose to use wide range of, wide range of tools, both digital and non-digital. For instance, we could try to use sporting events or festivals to bring Europe into the daily lives of citizens. It is, a clear, it is clear that a two-year-long conference involving a multitude of different events will need a strong organization. As this is a truly joint effort, it will be important to establish a simple, workable and practical structure which gives the three main European institutions ownership of the conference and jointly decide on the best way how to organize the work. I, uh, last week, I represented the Commission at the debate in European Parliament uh, 
and uh, I had I talked about our position in uh, on the resolution. The Council is in the process of discussing the position and uh, I will participate in a, in a General Affairs Council on 28th of January when uh, this will be deliberated. The concept, structure, scope and timing of the conference will be jointly defined with the European Parliament and European Council. We suggest, Commission suggests, that this could take the form of a joint declaration which should then open to other signatories, including other European institutions, organizations, stakeholders, who would commit to respect the objectives and modalities of this conference. The Commission proposes to officially launch the conference on Europe Day on 9th of May this year, 70 years after the signing of Schuman Declaration and 75 years after the end of Second World War. So, and in conclusion, we will have to be bold, creative and embrace together the innovative nature of this process. Where there is a will, there is a way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice President. We will now take some questions on the conference. David. Thank you. I've just uh, quickly read, not in its entirety, the press release you've just published. So I don't know all the details yet about uh, of your proposals. Uh, about the first pillar of uh, your idea of conference, uh, uh, the thematic discussion, um, is that uh, 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 the, 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 the discussion should be around the priority of the uh, von der Leyen Commission. Uh, climate change, uh, 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 digital, uh, European values, uh, uh, a bigger role of the EU in the world, uh, what about the future? I mean, those are the priorities of today and the next five years, but this conference should be about the future. So maybe uh, when uh, the next uh, economic crisis will hit European Union. So uh, I understand that this is not an exclusive uh, 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 list, but you are saying that the debate should be around your priority. And for me, it's difficult to understand that because the future is 10, 20 years from now. It's not now. Why you have chosen to focus just on your priorities? Thank you. Thank you for this question. As I said, the content uh, will go around the priorities and the guidelines of this commission and on the strategic agenda of the Council, which doesn't mean that we will limit uh, the debate whoever uh, of the citizens want to talk about uh, some other issues, we are open uh, for, for this. So there is no limitation, but our idea is to have this scope of priorities which cover, the priorities cover almost all things, all issues uh, which are of the interest of our citizens, not only for today, but also our, our political guidelines are for five years and maybe also uh, uh, more looking forward to the future. So we are not, we won't limit. This is our idea, but I, I just told you uh, what uh, was the initial idea and what is our contribution. But we have to as you know, we are looking forward to European Council and then we will have uh, the fi uh, final document. Thanks so much. Um, Diego Velasquez, Luxembourger Wort. Uh, thank you, Vice President. Um, most real life um, research and academic research on the topic of public consultation has actually shown that if you organize things like this with the public and you don't and people don't see the direct outcome of what they discussed and what concrete comes out of it it actually generated more frustration than there was before so my question is rather easy how can pe w w um, how will participants see the concrete outcome of what they discussed and decided in EU action thank you thank you for this question this is very important questions and maybe the most important 
if we don't show the results and the outcome, it's better not to start this uh, conference. So definitely we will have feedback and uh, it will be, as I said, a multilingual platform which will be organized and the citizens can, would be informed at all stages on what is going on. And I'm sure that the, the outcome, as I said, will be uh, in two years' time or after two years' time will be translated or transposed into concrete policies, into concrete even in legislative acts. Okay, Patty. Uh, Paddy Smith, Irish Times. Yeah, I want to ask you uh, two related questions. One is, is why the reference to uh, treaty change was removed from, from the Commission's initial uh, document. Uh, I know it's a very sensitive issue in the country I come from, uh, but is, is, do you really see treaty change as a possible outcome uh, of, the, uh, of the meeting? And secondly, in relation to this, I, I, I'm interested that the, the, the definition that you've given, but I'm not sure about the document, which I haven't had a chance to read, uh, doesn't deal with issues like the extension of qualified majority voting uh, to areas that the Commission has been in, in recent past agitating about really quite strongly, like in foreign policy, in, in taxation, uh, and in, in the economy generally to give the um, citizens through the Parliament a, a, a greater say in the um, uh, decisions taken by the Union. Are these issues on the table for discussion too? Thank you for these two questions. As I said, all issues are on the table. Uh, relating to treaty change, it is not removed from the document, but as we said, we are not going to preempt what will be the outcome of the, these debates, these conferences, these roundtables. So we will let citizens to tell us uh, what do they want. If they want treaty change, as you might have read in political guidelines of our commission, we are open to, to this too. But uh, you know that Parliament and Council have more to say on this than Commission, but of course uh, it's in their hands. But we have nothing against, as I said. Second question, qualified uh, majority. Uh, as I said, there will be two strands uh, of debate. One will be on daily issues and political guidelines and another strand on institutional matters, which means that under these institutional matters, everything could be debated and uh, qualified majority is also on the table. So, uh, but it depends again on the Council and uh, on uh, European Parliament. But of course, Commission won't have anything against. Question in French now, I think. Virginie? Ah, bon. Alors. French. Perfect. No, it's fine. Yes, please, Thomas. <laughs> Thank you. Roland Siegel, German Press Agency. Um, there have been uh, earlier some <coughs> uh, conferences on the future of Europe. I remember uh, the European Convention, for example, which was not really a big success because the outcome was quite uh, well. And do you think that the upcoming one will be more successful? And if so, why? Oh, that's a question. <laughs> Thank you for these questions. <laughs> believe me, I, I believe in the success of this conference. And uh, I would, I, uh, you would be surprised this is how I see, because I wouldn't be in this role and I wouldn't be assigned this role if I don't believe in the, in the outcome of this uh, conference. Uh, I know that uh, previous debates were not uh, successful enough, but the reason is what your colleague asked before, because the feedback was not uh, uh, trans, uh, transformed uh, to the citizens. So this time, uh, one of the reasons for enacting or one of the reasons for uh, having this conference is that more than 50 percent of citizens there, there was a uh, turnout on these elections in uh, in may more than 50 percent and we realized that citizens wants to tell us something they want to have their say and this is the reasons why we want to listen to them and this will be more listening exercise than uh, uh, talking, So it will be bottom-up exercise, and I believe that uh, when we hear what do citizens want, we will try to transpose this into concrete policies, into tangible policies, as I said, even in, uh, even in uh, maybe some uh, 
legal acts. Yes, uh, James Cantor from EU Scream. Um, I had two questions expanding on what some of my colleagues have asked. When it comes to the agoras, uh, you've spoken about citizen feedback, but might it be a good idea, in your opinion, if the feedback from those agoras is binding? Uh, and would you favor that, that the results that come out of those purely citizen-led bodies uh, actually make binding recommendations. The second question, um, there's some concern that the civil society organizations have not got a big enough role uh, in what is foreseen. Uh, of course, there's a role for Business Europe and a role for the trade unions. Uh, but what about all of the groups out there that represent the interests of citizens that are concerned with the environment, the digital future, and have a lot to say, for example, about finding a settlement when it comes to the tricky issue of migration? Thank you. Thank you for this question. May, may I start from NGOs? So uh, you might not, uh, I might not uh, have, I might not have highlighted this, but definitely NGOs will have a great role according to our uh, uh, our proposal. So NGOs are very important. Uh, they represent citizens, and I think the most of citizens will come from these NGOs. So I don't uh, think that they won't be represented. If you are referring to Parliament's resolution, I don't, I don't know exactly, but. Uh, we will, uh, as I said, uh, try to work on joint uh, declaration on behalf of all three institutions, and I hope er everyone will be included. Regarding binding, uh, bi binding conclusions, it's hard to say, but we will try, uh, as I said, to have a constant dialogue and to keep it open. If majority of citizens want something, why not uh, make it binding? But then we have to decide on, on, on how to organize this. We are in the initial phase, and I can't say more at this moment. Of course, migration will be one of topics because, uh, all, as I said, all six uh, political guidelines, they cover everything. Migration, uh, uh, promotion of uh, our way of life, uh, digital, uh, EU Green Deal, a stronger Europe in the world, new push for European democracy, every economy that works for people. So everything is within uh, these priorities. So there is no issue which will be abolished. So everything can be, deba be debated. Yes, I, can, I can't see you with all my glasses very well. <laughs> Go ahead. We will see. Here with, here on the fourth row, on the right, just behind you. Yeah, yes. Yeah, sorry, can't see you clearly. I need to get new contact lenses. Lionel uh, Julien Arte, uh, just a question about the draft, uh, the resolution of the Parliament last week. Uh, they, they, they proposed something like a use uh, agora with citizen agora and. Uh, and the use uh, agora, and why you don't uh, sustain and back this proposition? A kind of permanent structure. Uh. <laughs> Thank you for asking these questions. Uh, there is, uh, we, we haven't said that we, we don't support, so we haven't said it. We are, as I said, we are looking forward to uh, all three institutions and to see what is the best. So we have to have common proposal in order to start uh, this exercise. So there is not, we haven't said that we don't support, but let's see what will be uh, the outcome of three institutions. As I said, we will have a General Affairs Council on 28th, and uh, we will see what will be, uh, at, at, I, I'm, I'm, sh I'm not sure that on 28th, European Council will have their firm and final uh, proposal, but we will uh, listen to them and see how to incorporate this in this uh, joint uh, declaration. Krasnitsi from Dietzenet Agency. If I may ask a question as a citizen, not as a journalist. Uh, as to what happens to when uh, citizens of the EU, some member, member countries, are 
us, we saw it in 95 concerning in, in few referendums in member states. My question will be as a citizens, will the commission eventually propose a, a, a wider consultation uh, on all EU citizens while well, perhaps should uh, the decision making uh, in the future on uh, the EU foreign affairs should be made by a uh, qualified majority. It can be either a, a, a EU wide opinion survey or perhaps a referendum. So how, how you plan to channel that civil uh, citizens contribution? Thank you for this question. As uh, I will repeat, uh, we said it will be bottom-up exercise. So citizens will be free to talk whatever they want if they think that a qualified majority is uh, necessary. As I said, we are open. So we, will, uh, we won't channel it in a way you... Uh, so this is the reason why we uh, call this listening exercise. We'll listen to them, we'll be engaged and see what will be the outcome. That's, that's it. Nothing more than that. From the Swiss broadcaster, I'm coming back to the binding aspect. I haven't really fully understood your aspect. Do you think that the answers of this exercise should be binding or not? And also, what about if the citizens want less Europe, if that's what they ask for, would you then be ready, would the Commission be ready to follow the citizens' request? A very interesting question. As we said, if, there, there, would, if there, is, there would be a majority of them, then of course we will follow. This is what, uh, what uh, I said. 50% of citizens, more than 50, took part in the European elections. Uh, either uh, we don't know what were their ideas, but either positive or negative towards Europe, either skeptic uh, or not skeptic, skeptic. So we are ready to talk to everyone. We are ready to listen to everyone, and then we will see what will be the final result. And we will implement the final results, which is uh, asked for us, uh, from us in all our mission letters. Each commissioner is asked to take part in this conference, to listen to citizens, and if you want to know, each of us has to visit each member state within the uh, first half of our mandate in order to start listening and engaging with citizens. This is very important. We know that there is maybe a gap sometimes between citizens and politicians, and we want to fill in this gap with proper, frank, open, transparent dialogue. Yes. Three more questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Augustin Palok, I'm from Utah and East Croatia. I see that there is a Croatian interpretation, and if you don't mind, I will ask in Croatian. Uh, Madam Vice President, Vice President, is enlargement in the future of Europe because the citizens should know whether in the future the EU will be larger or not, and whether you will include in your discussion citizens from states who want to join the EU in the future. Thank you, Mr. Palokai. I will reply in Croatian. So, enlargement, yes, by all means, that should be on the agenda. Even under the portfolio that's called Strong Europe in the World. So, you know the position of the co Commission about enlargement. You know what the situation is about Northern, uh, Northern uh, Macedonia and Albania. Our uh, position is positive, and of course, we want the citizens to talk about that as well. The second part of your question referring to citizens from countries who want to join the EU, at this point I'm not sure that uh, the conference will include their countries as well. I'm sure there will be other formats where we could talk to them about that uh, and include them, but at this point I'm not sure. But in any case, I believe that the enlargement is a very important subject from various reasons. As you well know, this part of Europe, uh, Southeast Europe, is very important for us and the so-called West Balkans, and it's important for us to make it a part of the Union, mostly from security reasons. And I hope that you share my beliefs as well. Question. Uh, yes. 
Non. Yes. Oui, pour toi. Conseiller Scanius, I, I would like to ask you uh, two quite uh, precise questions uh, concerning the two uh, pillars. One on uh, the issues. Uh, on the issues, uh, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a, a problem in the treaties. You say that you are open also if it is uh, asked by the people to review the treaty. Uh, we have no industrial policy as a EU competence. The industrial policy is not a EU competence. That means that uh, industrial, uh, industrial policy measures cannot be harmonized at the EU level. And uh, this, uh, with the priorities of this commission, is a problem. Uh, because there is the idea of having uh, EU industrial policy. Uh, the former commissioner Tajani tried also, but uh, then it was with the open coordination method, which never worked. So is this one of the ideas that could emerge to change the treaty in order to have EU policy, uh, industrial policy as EU competence? Uh, second issue on uh, institutions, uh, you say there is the, this idea of discussing the transnational lists, uh, which is uh, very testing and very welcome, uh, for, I think, by citizens. Uh, but what about uh, EU uh, electoral law for the parliament? Because as it is now, we have seen it with the immunity issue on the Catalan uh, uh, MEPs. Uh, the, the immunity that is given to MEPs is national and not European. So you have different laws, different national laws for the immunity of the same MEPs, I mean, the, 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 the members of the same parliament. So is there an idea to have finally uh, uh, EU electoral law as they have now the same salary, which was not the case before. They have the same salary, but not the same electoral law and not the same immunity. Is this a problem? Thank you for these questions. Uh, first of all, let me remind all of us that uh, Europe is founded on uh, subsidiarity. So member states' competence is member states' competence, and we, won't, we will not involve uh, in this. But, of course, if, as I said, citizens want to discuss uh, whatever they want to discuss, it will be on the agenda. So uh, I cannot tell you about industrial policy because uh, it's uh, within the member states' competence. And, uh, but if citizens uh, will talk on this and if they show they are interested in this, uh, we are, as I told you, we are open uh, to uh, all changes, but we will not propose this first. We will use all exi existing mechanisms which are on the table. And regarding, regarding transnational lists and the electoral law and immunity, transnational lists will be debated and we will see what will be the outcome, but you might... Uh, 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 you, I'm sure that you know that uh, uh, no one would like to approach 2024 elections without knowing the rules. So we have to do this, this as soon as possible. So who, who will approach the elections without uh, concrete rules uh, re regarding uh, the elections for European Parliament? Regarding electoral law, it is in the hands of European Parliament. They are the ones who, who have uh, to start debate on this and see if... Uh, if they want to change this, but also in the hands of national, parla national parliaments and national legislation. So let us see what will debate show. As I said, and this is my final word, we don't want to preempt any conclusions. We are open, and uh, we will see what the debate will show in the end. So thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We bring this uh, press conference to a close. Uh, see you tomorrow for the midday briefing.